The divisions in the world are stark. Recent years have shown some of the largest natural disasters ever in history. And that really hits hardest the people who had the least to begin with. These people need help. It would be a real tragedy if all these advances in science and health and technology only benefit people in a position to pay for them. There should be no lesser standard if you happen to be poor. These problems can be overcome. Direct Relief is a humanitarian, nonprofit health organization. The focus has been on the least fortunate, most vulnerable people who are just stuck by virtue of circumstance where they're born, or where they live. On a good day, things are tough for a lot of people in this world and in this country. On a day-to-day -day basis, we are in touch with thousands of people and partner organizations. And what we can do is mobilize private resources for their benefit and make it available free of charge. We are the largest private provider of cold chain medications. We're the first nonprofit in the history of the United States to obtain accreditation just like a commercial distributor. And it's been expanded geographically to every country in the world and every state and territory of the United States. What's now Direct Relief officially was started in 1948 as a private effort of a war immigrant businessman named William Zimden. And it was just with his own money and the sensibilities of a business person who himself was an immigrant. The basic guiding principles of a war immigrant businessman really influence what Direct Relief has done ever since. And they begin with just serving the people who need help. The level of need, it's huge and, and unfortunately growing. And so the privilege of Direct Relief is being able to do something on behalf of folks who need help. It's a non-patronizing approach. It's deep respect for the people we're working with. You know, Direct Relief works with both people in the most desperate circumstances imaginable and some of the leading companies in the world. And that's a rare toggle. I think most of us spend most of our time with people who are most like us. There's great people and great talent and great dedication, and they never meet. So we do our best to lift from the bottom and bring resources to where they're needed, and also invite participation from the top. And both are important to, to make a dent. It's important to build on what exists. Directly, if it's interesting, it's government-like in its purpose. It exists only to serve the public good but it's business-like and private in its character. The purpose has always been very basic. You know, how do you mobilize private resources without any other agenda other than to help and make them available in the most efficient way possible? One of the guiding principles is removing barriers. How do you encourage a company to understand that there are people who are never going to show up on your sales forecast. Boy, will they benefit from the service. So the barriers of visibility, of perspective are real, but there's practical barriers that and we do our best to identify those and tackle them one at a time. There's such a complexity involved in getting medication to someone who needs it. So we recognized at Direct Relief that, that functionally we were playing this role of a medical distributor. And we asked ourselves, are we doing that well? And if not, let's do that well. So the functional role that we're playing, we have to be good at. We think it's important to ensure value for money. And Direct Relief relies entirely on private contributions. Yes, the cause is righteous, but the activity should be as good as the spirit in which the funds are contributed. Another guiding principle is to be a good partner and advocate. Everything we do is respectful of the people that we exist to serve. And it's simple, give credit where it's due, listen carefully. That's really important to us. It's important to move fast to save lives, but it's also important to look at how you're doing it and that there is a post-event reality and to be cognizant of that as you're doing it in the moment, and that's something that we've learned along the way. Each one of us has value as a person, and health is a human 
right, whether it's your nationality or your ethnic background or your race or your religion or your gender. Non-discrimination is implicit and inherent in everything Direct Relief stands for and does. Inherently, Direct Relief's activities involve logistics and distribution, particularly in a chaotic and post-emergency environment. These are vexing issues, and we want to do it as well as it can be done. So we ask the people who are best in the world if they would be interested in participating. And FedEx was obvious. So for Direct Relief to have the benefit of all of what FedEx has learned is enormously powerful. It allows scale, it allows efficiency, it allows a new perspective. And that's what we mean by aiming high. So we have this great privilege of engaging with people who come in with from very different backgrounds, but with the same purpose of trying to just do something good. It doesn't matter if you're typing or talking on the phone or working on the, on the warehouse floor. They're all part of an effort that means something bigger. And that is the fuel that kind of keeps you going. It gives you some sense that there is a way to make meaningful progress, even for a little organization that started at a kitchen table, but that's what provides motivation in life. The notion that many people, just by virtue of where they're born, the color of their skin, the country they live in, they're gonna get sicker, they're gonna stay sicker longer, and they're gonna die sooner. That's pretty good motivation. These issues are too big for any one organization to address. We really work hard to honor these guiding principles, invite people to participate, and we are sure thankful for the thousands of people across the country and world who have become part of Direct Relief by virtue of their participation. Mm -hmm.